All right, let me explain this update, this monstrosity. Okay? So we were able to pull, I was able to pull 40.8 inches of mercury using water. I did it with two, with a certain circuit. Now I'm going to take that circuit just a little bit further. Okay? This is just a regular vacuum um, pressure pump for air. I, I, I want it because we're going to be passing bubbles. So it's going to compress and there's little reed valves and everything. And then my controls will be here uh, for the hydrogen input. And then this is supposed to be cut and this is going to regenerate back into the Delovely cell, to the fusion cell, okay? So we're going to recirculate everything purposely. There's a reason for this. I have a reason for just about everything that I do. So this one is the exhaust, as you can see. And I should not be building very much pressure here, okay? This will be my control for the exhaust. It'll come in here, and this will be pressure coming through here through the expansion chamber. Through this circuit, there'll be a vacuum gauge here, a vacuum gauge here, a vacuum gauge here, a vacuum gauge here, and a vacuum gauge here. I should say vacuum vacuum pressure gauges so I know which way everything is swinging okay so as the aerated water comes through here it's going to achieve its first suction here it's going to achieve its second suction here this is going to be the third suction fourth suction because I want this to be just about balanced okay these glass piece of tubing here will go in here so I could see the bubbles once everything's fitted I'll know what the length is that's not a problem okay this is the next vacuum next vacuum next vacuum okay primary vacuum so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine vacuum ports. <laughs> okay? <laughs> this is a calendrum. <laughs> I've done this before, so I'm relatively comfortable. But if I can do 40 inches, maybe I can do a little more. Now, I know you guys think that's bullshit. Okay, I'm gonna just going to go ahead and put the link directly to the video of my nano bubble tub. And then I'm going to put the link to the page of my website so that you see that vacuum gauge at startup go slam <laughs> 30 inches, past 30 inches. We didn't have a vacuum gauge in the shop, so we decided to pull mercury. Well, that didn't work right away. We had to get a taller mercury tube. So the reason that we came up with, the reasoning that I'm going to try to disprove myself here. This is something that I do to relax myself. Everything else is for everybody else. This is the kind of shit that I do just to get myself relaxed. Not to mention the engine that I'm building. That type of stuff. If you can figure it out that 40 inches or 40... Uh, um, 408 inches of water is 30 inches of vacuum. 
So we decided to go the other way <laughs> through. There's one more thing that goes on here that you're not going to see yet. I'm, I have to finish building it. Okay. We figured if we could go that way, that's why the, the ratio was working. Okay. Because we used a certain, um, a certain pump. A, a very certain pump and so I'm gonna try it with this pump because I think the principles are the same it relates to the column of feet that a water pump can lift if a water pump can lift 400 inches well then it should be able to pull mercury but see mercury is denser than water. So that doesn't seem to compute until you use the power of a nanobubble. Now, if you look at our nanobubble page, I own the copyrighted circuit, the patent, and all that stuff. <laughs> so nobody could take that from me because I can understand it and explain it. We went over that with the cold fusion. Okay? But there was an imbalance that was good enough to do that. But I didn't like the imbalance. But that imbalance of the double Z pinch is something that will be used to balance the load in the thruster. Okay? But we're going to enhance it a little bit. And at the moment, I'm coaxing Marco Roden to help me with this extremely important coil winding because only Marco Roden and his registered genius brain can wrap his head around my math. So right now <laughs> he's in a bit of a conundrum. And if anybody knows Marco Roden, he's not easily put into a conundrum. So right now, <laughs> Marco Rodin is studying my oscilloscope patterns. And I don't know the outcome of his conundrum yet, but I know he's in one. <laughs> so this is very respectful to Marco Rodin. Okay. He's going to help me twist the th the thruster part of the plasma force hydride fuel thruster the ripple but he's going to take his coils and now he's going to have to change <laughs> everything he thinks he knows about the math that he thinks he knows because he continues to talk about squaring. Well, now I'm going to take his math and I'm going to introduce him to my heterodyne squaring. So at the moment, he's in a conundrum. But I can tell you for a fact, it's going to twist his underwears in a knot <laughs> because he has to figure out this because I cannot figure out this. I know the principles. I can explain it. I know how. I can drop it into a patent. I can do everything but when you add the next part that you're not seeing right now, it completely <laughs> puts me into a conundrum. Okay? And that's not an easy thing to do. So, I'm letting Marco Roden suffer first. And then we'll see what this is because what I'm telling you is something that is empirically fact 
is that I have four metals <laughs> that are not on the periodic chart because they're hydrogen bound. Okay. Some are a little unstable. They only last a certain amount of time. Okay. And then they just fall apart. So I need to up the potential, but I can't up the potential until I have more vacuum. <laughs> Because now we have a periodic chart that goes from zero vacuum the other way. And right now, I'm at 40 inches the other way. I got to prove that I can go more than 40 inches. So I have plenty of glass tubing now that's long enough because we sucked it out of the top of the last one. So I have plenty of glass tubing now. I have this complete understanding of what I'm doing. And we're just going to have to see. Because that's an unlimited, ridiculous periodic chart. Because every element is a digestion. Okay, it's not an element, it's a digestion. And I want to put something to you so that you completely understand this. There is one metal on our planet that is a digestion. Okay, and that digestive metal is AU, gold. Gold is a digestion. So when you take gold and you put it through proton spectrometry, that's how you know what where the gold came from in the world because it's a digestion from these worms of hell that are the nickname, but I grow these worms <laughs> and I make those little suckers poo gold. So my joke is anybody who worships gold, <laughs> you're worshiping poo. <laughs> okay. That's a fact. That's an absolute fact. That's why nobody's been able to make gold. Okay. Because it's a digestion. So these new elements, they're a digestion to give you a new element. Gold was just our tickle me fancy. So that's where we're going. Thank you for your time in this very, very important update.